Are you ready to overcome the complexities and burdens that come with your success? Join the team at Centura Wealth Advisory in the Live Life Liberated podcast. Now, on to the show. Hello and welcome to Live Life Liberated with the team from Centura Wealth Advisory. Today we've got two people in studio and that's Derek Myron and Kyle Malmstrom. What's going on guys? Good morning, Eric. Good morning, Eric. I'm excited. What are you guys talking about? We are talking about the professionals that serve high net worth and ultra high net worth families and the potential gaps in those services. And oftentimes these professionals that serve ultra high net worth families are transactional in nature, and they also serve numerous clients. And so we're going to talk about what are those gaps and how Mm -hmm. those families should seek services. Okay. All right. What do we start with? Well, first I'd start off with just saying, welcome back, Derek. He's been, he's in studio today. He's been out of town for a while. So good to have you back. Thank you, Kyle. Nice to be back. Uh, Although it's, Still a little odd coming back into the office and there's only a handful of people here and you've been experiencing that for the last year and a half or so. And Stupid uh, COVID. <laughs> That's what I have to say about that. <laughs> well, let's talk about the professionals here and particularly with the ultra high net worth space and high net worth space, these families, let's, let's, let's identify who these candidates are and, and who these people are and what, they're, what the issue may be. And these people have businesses, business interests, they have real estate, could be single family rentals all the way to syndicated real estate, could be trusts and estates, general generation wealth issues, income tax burdens. There's a host of of things that come with having that type of wealth. And these families, you know, they have a roster of professionals, the CPA, the estate planning attorney, maybe a contract attorney, you know, there's lots of personal CFO, whatever it is, they have this whole bench of of professionals that help them out. And today we're talking about how do those people coordinate? What's the best way to get the right answer? And how do you, how do you map that all out? So let's talk about trusted professionals, Derek, who's typically, you know, when we meet with a client, who do we usually meet with first and, and what role do those people play and, and who do these clients trust most in their life and, and fall back to on for advice? Yeah, I think it's uh, the pretty standard list. These people come to us because they have some issue, right? There's some issue or opportunity and a current team isn't getting addressed. And typically it's the CPA, financial planner, estate planner, and or a family member, right? I mean, one of those people is usually, those four people are usually the, the person that's the most trusted advisor. And um, it's pretty pretty common. That's the list. Yep. And so, you know, we meet with a client, we, we talk to them about their goals and we get the balance sheet and we always ask them, you know, who do we need to coordinate with and who, who, who is the trusted professional? And so when talking with clients about creating solutions and, and who do we need to talk to on the, on the team, let's talk about the CPA because that's usually the first one that comes up and they're always like, Hey, let's get our CPA involved. And Derek, what's your what's your take on interviewing these people's CPA and where that CPA is in a lot of people's lives? I think there's two types of CPAs, and I think that clients need to understand which type of CPA they have. Is it a transactional CPA who really gets paid to do tax returns and audits, or do they have a consulting CPA or a combination consulting? So typically what I ask clients to do is, go to their CPA and ask them what percentage of your revenue comes from preparing tax returns, doing tax compliance work and audit work, and what percentage of your revenue comes from doing consulting work. And if you find out that it's 100% on the compliance and audit and that kind of work and none on the consulting work, you understand they are not a consultant. They are transactional by nature, going to give you some advice, and the world needs those people. They also need consultants to help you figure out what your plan is. Yeah, these these CPAs will typically have two to four hundred clients and they're preparing tax returns. And starting in January, it's it's document collection and give us your 1099s and K1s and W2s, whatever it is. And they're collecting all that information 
and then they're going to put it all together on a tax return and you're going to review it and and that's primarily a lot of CPAs business and there are these CPAs they're always happy to do forward looking plan but what you, to Derek's point what is what's their core business and if that's their core business then you have to realize that they're they're looking backwards a lot of the times looking at the previous year and the, and then they you know once they get that all gathered up and they see the facts then they can say, okay, hey, these are some things you might want to do, but are they really taking a 10-year approach, really looking out? Do they have all the information? You know, they got the tax information. You know if they're not on the consulting side, it's typically one year looking backwards, that's what they're trained to do, and one year looking forward on your estimates. That's usually most CPAs who are on the compliance side. If they're on the consulting side, then, okay, now they're, they may be looking on a bigger picture. So Kyle, when we talk about the second group, which is estate planning attorneys, what do we typically find when we're interviewing clients who their estate planning attorney folks who who serve the ultra high net worth camp? On the estate planning side, let's quickly chat about the two tax regimes, income tax and wealth transfer tax. On the income tax side, you have ordinary income and capital gains tax. On the wealth transfer side, you have estate gift and gift generation skipping taxes. And estate planning attorneys like to focus on the wealth transfer tax side of things. And typically estate planning attorneys will have three to 500 clients. That's a lot of clients. And that kind of puts them a little bit in a transactional nature. Just because things come up, they get called, they get pulled in and they spend a couple of months sorting out some sort of issue and they get the planning wrapped up and then you know, they have lots of clients to deal with. And what we don't see, they love to coordinate, don't get me wrong, they, they definitely come to the table with great ideas and do their homework. But the question is, how do, they, how do they solve for income tax plus wealth transfer taxes? Because it's the sum of the two of them, you know, it's the total tax overall that you pay over your lifetime that, that we try to solve and that clients want to solve, frankly. So I think that most estate planning attorneys that do have three to 500 clients, they see 20% of their client base a year because they're seeing that client every five years. And they don't have the time or the resources to really suss out the entire situation. So you have estate planning attorneys that focus on the long term on wealth transfer. You have your CPAs that focus on the short term on income tax. Who is bringing that all together? And I really think that role is of the financial planner to spend the time to get the facts, assumptions, and goals memorialized in a way that can be shared with the professional team. And we believe that for these ultra high net worth families, a team of folks that can't, cannot serve too many families. At our firm, we limit it to 60 to 70 families, a team of four folks, because there are just too many details to memorialize, coordinate, update, stay on top of. Couldn't agree more. And when we meet with CPAs and estate planning attorneys, I would just say, you know, when we orchestrate a meeting with all the professionals, every, everybody shows up, they've done their homework, they know what they're going to present. They know what the solutions are going to be. They know what the issues are going to be. My experience is while they all come to the table to do that, they don't particularly like to get everybody at the table on their own. They, they, they kind of have a silo approach. And so our approach is to, t- to get all those people to the table. And so for the high net worth family, a lot of times the planning resides in the individual that's kind of managing the estate. Right. They meet with the CPA. They meet with the estate planning attorney. They meet with whoever it is, the other trusted advisors, the valuation guys, whatever it is. And they have to relay this information back and forth. And, and they will get a couple of the professionals together for a meeting or two. But how ongoing is that? And, and it really puts the burden on that one individual to learn each of the disciplines and try to communicate, OK, hey, this is what the CPA said. Then he takes it to the EPA and the EPA says, OK, great. He bounces back and forth. And so who's running the plan? It's this coordination, this labor, the laboring or of coordination often does fall to the family. And I, having somebody who has coordinated by pulling together all of the facts, assumptions and goals by putting, pulling together a family tree, p- 
pulling together an overall entity chart that maps out the relationships amongst the 10, 20, 30 entities, maps out the overall cash flow plan, maps out the overall tax, the income tax plan. Somebody has to go pull all that together. And these other professionals, that typically isn't in their realm. They're doing these transactional things. They're putting together an estate plan. They're putting together a tax return. They're selling a life insurance policy. They're transactional in nature. And I would say most professionals prefer that. It's easier to deliver a product, a transaction. It is much more difficult and much to deliver a service and especially an ongoing service of we're going to manage these details of your financial life. Like in, you're outsourcing this role of an outsourced CFO to somebody to pull this together. So all the professionals in your life are making, have real time information to making really good decisions and helping provide families advice. You know, we call that sing, singing from the same hymn sheet, right? And we spend a lot of time meticulously putting together these entity charts that show the flow of taxation. Grantor trusts are taxed differently than non-grantor trusts. And from a wealth generation, GST trust, how's that going to flow? And we, we map it all out. And it really gives the professionals an opportunity to see the full landscape and not just a sliver, not, not just one big piece of the pie that's kind of in their realm. And so that is one of the values that we bring and, we, and and the and the families get it. The families, they have to they have to go to these all these professionals and try to get them all this coordinated. And when you have a nice, when you have it all laid out like this, everyone can just see it, and it just makes it so much easier. And all the you know, nobody misses any considerations. It allows you to figure out. Hey, at the end of the day, it's always about pros and cons. And we have this conversation. Hey, you're gonna like this, or you're not gonna like this. And we're gonna we're gonna pivot on the plan, however you see fit. But here's what here's what our initial plan is and here's what we see and you're going to tell us what you like and don't like and then we'll pivot and we'll talk to the professionals and figure out where the holes are and what we need to figure out and where we need to go and so that coordination is is tough to what Derek's saying and there's a lot of details to be managed there particularly for the ultra high net worth family so as we get these facts assumptions and goals memorialized we have a view right here's our view of what we think the solution set ought to be to be considered the estate planning attorney, as we lay this all out, first off, they're, they're thankful, right? They're thankful that, gosh, somebody's taken the time to really go memorialize all this and making their job easier. And then they have a view, right? Here, here are the things that they see which could be very beneficial based on the facts, assumptions, and goals. And then the CPA, you know, they're, they're going to have a view as well. And between those three views, when, when, as we triangulate between the three of them, it's like a Venn diagram. We can get what is the most, the transactions that intersect amongst all of it to say, okay, let's priority rank these transactions and figure out which one should be first, second, and third. Once we've got that, the, great. That's Now we're at this, in, the third step in our process. And Kyle, you want to take it from there? We, we've got the, the short list of the things that we should look at first. Yeah, our process is called the liberated wealth process. And what Derek was just describing was the uncover, which is where we find all the facts, assumptions, goals, the unlock, which is figuring out, okay, hey, what are the options? And then we get into design. And to what Derek's point is, hey, we're going to lay out all of this stuff and we're going to banter back and forth and we're going to figure out the design and we're going to say, okay, what do you like, don't like? And we're going to build this, this blueprint. That's the analogy we use quite a bit. It's a blueprint for the plan. And who puts the blueprint together? That's probably the biggest question I have for folks out there is who's putting your blueprint together? Is it you? Is it your CPA? Is it your state planning attorney? Who is it that's managing all these details and getting it on paper so you can really have informed, educated decisions based on your particular circumstance? And it's not generic. You're not just pulling some strategy off the shelf. This is specifically tailored to you and your family and what your goals are. It, it's so it's so impactful in our clients' lives when you can get to this point. And then at that point, right, I mean, we just, we go into the implementation stage, which is work, but at least everyone's on the same page. So as we've gotten these solutions, and Kyle's talking about drawing this plan, 
And this is an iterative process where we've laid out the first plan and we've got the first solution and we're figuring out how to bend it. And there's this alphabet soup of acronyms that could make, you yeah. know, it, it, clients get killed with all these, with all these acronyms. We're trying to figure out which one of these acronyms that we should look at first, lay it out to the client in a way that they can understand. Here's the pros, here's the cons, here's the cost to set it up, here's the cost to monitor it, here's the potential audit risk, here's what your exposure is, here we can bend it this way or that way based on your goals. Client is making decisions like building the den in their house or now we're gonna build the living room and how do they want the wallpaper, all the decisions, and they're gonna keep making decisions. Now we're gonna take the next acronym off the list and we're gonna lay that in. It's like spaghetti soup, we're laying these transactions in to get them to their North Star, which is, are those goals, those goals that we've spent meticulous time in getting memorialized, that's what's driving how to lay these acronyms into this house in a way that they want it. The acronyms that Derek's talking about are the different strategies. And if you look at our podcast, that's typically what we do podcasts on, are all these different strategies from ings and just clats and you name it. We have a podcast for it. And if we haven't, we're, it's coming up and it's going to be here soon because that's what we like to talk about is the details on that stuff. But each of those is a siloed strategy does not reflect the optimal outcome for a client situation because it's just a specific strategy and we're just talking about basically how it works. And to Derek's point in the iterative process, it's saying, hey, what if we consider this strategy, this strategy, this strategy, what's the sequence of these strategies and how do we put it all together? And I think it, I think it really comes down to the professionals in, in, the, in our clients' lives or people that might be listening is who are the professionals you have in your life that know all these strategies? And I would, I would ask, I would want to ask your financial advisor, he may be throwing out these acronyms, how many of these have you done? He or she. He or she, yeah. I mean, if you, how many, I know you went to some presentations and you saw it and you know who to refer to, but how many have you actually been involved in? You, you got to get down to the experience level in it. And so in a lot of these transactions, you're talking with CPAs, EPAs, valuation experts, cost segregation people, M&A attorneys, investment bankers, fractional CFOs, PNC guys, whatever it is, there's a lot of considerations and experience that goes into really crafting a plan well if you're putting several of these pieces together. Many of these clients and taxpayers that have this eight, nine digit estates, I hear often they come in and they share what their issue is and they say, Derek or Kyle, what's the silver bullet? Like, <laughs> and <laughs> we just like if you were building a custom house, every taxpayer situation is different. Their, their facts, assumptions and goals are going to be different. The solutions are going to be different. Unfortunately, we can't just cookie cutter say, oh, you're just going to get this spec house right over here. Because it's not going to do what you want it to do. And so there is no silver bullet. It's the combination of solutions that curated well will deliver on the goals that you that we've teased out, that we've gotten down and memorialized. And, and you know, goals are hard because you have competing goals. You have goals that are you're running away from. You're saying, listen, this is a sacred cow. This is something that I absolutely I'm fearful of, this is what I want to be mindful of, here are my values. All of this has to go together to then, there's, there's science in putting this stuff together, there's also some art in, in crafting these plans. So that's the, that's the design phase of the plan, this iterative process going back and forth to get down to what it is you want, and then we get to phase four of the plan. Let me, let me before we get to four, let's, there's one more aspect to it, and that is specifically what's going on in time right now relative to your situation. So today, different opportunities arise based on different events. Right now we're in a historically low interest rate environment. That creates an opportunity. As that rate goes up, certain strategies become more attractive or less attractive. And so we want to be timely sometimes and we have to say, hey, look, maybe we're at a sequence here, but you might want to consider this now because this is going to change in your life. Or in COVID situation, you know, a lot of, in, a lot of businesses 
uh, went down quite a bit in value because of lost revenues. So now you have an opportunity to maybe shift out a business interest outside of your estate because the valuation is low, even though you know it's going to come back up in hockey stick later. And so it is also a timing thing. And I just want to emphasize that, that it's not just the plans. It's specific to the timing of what's going on in your life as well. And so then we get into the liberated piece, right? What is liberated wealth? We, we That's our our trademarked tagline. tagline, and it is liberating the family, the individual who's running the family business from the burdens of all of these decisions and, and how to go about it, and making and, and implementing the strategies to solve for what they're trying to solve for. And often we hear the families come in and they say, hey, look, we got four or five business interests and you know they roll up into this business and this LLC and they got this trust and they got these four irrevocable trusts over here, whatever it is, and they're like, man, I spend 70% of my time just managing the estate and only 30% of the time on the business and I'd really rather have it the other way. I'd really, I think I could make a lot more money just focusing on the business. And so by giving the laboring ore of the design work and the management and, and the solution set, we can liberate that individual from those burdens and allow them to do the things that that's more meaningful and more in line with what their goals and, and, and their vision is. Making them the CEO or the chairman of the board yep. and really getting those decisions down to the CFO level to say, hey, analyze this, present to me alternatives and the pros and cons of each decision. And so it's really getting it to C-level executive to then send it back to them to say, here, here are the decisions. Because they do want to be in control. They do want to make the decisions. Step four in, in implementation is the liberation. Like, okay, I, 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 this really is what I'm trying to accomplish. And I, I'm li- being liberated from whatever. There could be a variety of different financial concerns or operational concerns. Um, Tax concerns. <laughs> That's a big one. For sure. So let me spend just a moment and share with you the people that we serve. There's really three legs to the stool. There are people that we serve have typically have income north of a million dollars. And if they do, if they're here in California, they're paying approximately $400,000 in state and federal income tax. And depending on, we typically can mitigate, eliminate, or defer 20 to 80% of that burden, depending on what they tell us and what decisions they make. The second leg to the stool is they typically have money in motion events, whether that's death or divorce or sale of real estate, sale of a business, and they're gonna there's gonna be big tax considerations. If if it's a sale of a business, we put those folks into three categories: the gold, silver, and bronze. The ideal period is that 24 months in advance of signing that letter of intent. Right, Kyle and I, all the planning options are on the table, and we can do a lot of stuff. Typically, though, we get the call right at <laughs> four weeks beforehand. Hey, we're going to sign the letter of intent here in four weeks. Or, hey, I sold my business last week. Like, oh, okay. We call that the silver period. Silver yeah. period is from signed letter of intent till December 31st, midnight. We can do a lot of things, but we can't do everything that we could do in the gold period. And then the bronze period is December 31st, midnight to sign the tax returns. You're on the podium. You're looking up and you're saying, man. I sure wish I would have started earlier. I could have kept more of the gross. I just monetized my life's work. And and, and this is most folks that they're, they're going, gosh, I just didn't plan early enough. And so big, big opportunity there. And then, and then the third leg to the stool are people that have estates. And so if you're single and have over 11, uh, $12 million or married over 23 or 24 million, then they have an estate and they need wealth transfer. And typically our clients have all three. They have high income north of a million bucks. They have one or multiple money in motion events that are going to face them over the coming period. And they have estates that need wealth transfer. And so that those are the people that we serve well. Kyle, you want to make a comment around that? I do. I'd want to say that if you're a business owner and you fell into the silver period, birds of feather flock together and you probably know other business owners that might be exiting, you might give them a little heads up. They don't make the, uh, go, go talk to somebody ahead of time and, and, Get your plan dialed in before, just arbitrarily three weeks before the letter of intent sign coming up and saying, hey, what can you guys do? And it, that's an all too often story. I mean, that is, that one's too, that one's too familiar. So, and everyone's like, oh man, and, and do your buddies right and help them out, I guess would be the moral of the story there. 
Or if you're going to sell your second business, do it sooner, right? So I think we all know there's big legislative changes coming this year. We our, our recommendation is to plan. We are really good at it here at our firm. If you have somebody that's really good at it, that's great. We we Getting those plans in place and figuring out how you're going to optimize for your situation is really important. Most professionals are transactional and they have a client base that's so big that won't allow them to be more holistic. If you don't have somebody like that and want to talk to us, we'd love to chat with you about this. We think it's uh, this. Our services will be only more valuable as every state, local and federal budget has been blown with COVID and they're going to spend more time taking more of your money and uh, planning's just probably going to be a higher IRR on, on time spent. So in that vein, people are always asking, Hey, where do you think, where do you think Congress is going to settle with all these tax changes? And it's like a ping pong ball and that thing just goes back and forth. And one day I would say, here's where I think it's going to be. And two weeks later, well, this is what they're talking about. And I don't frankly know where it's going to land, but I do believe tax rates are going to go higher. My, my assessment is a lot of people are waiting for Congress to print the tape to say, hey, here's our, here are the tax changes, and then everyone's going to take action. And if they make massive tax changes, it's going to be, it's going to be it just everyone's going to be running for their professionals, and the bandwidth is going to get sucked up so quick, and prices are going to go up. And so you can do planning ahead of time to at least know where you're going to pivot before they print the tape. You, if you believe tax rates are going higher, I encourage you to speak to your professionals, speak to us, see what, see what you need to put in place beforehand because the print the tape uh, strategy is going to be expensive, I think. Yeah. It's going to be like a uh, small rock going into a bathtub. The ripple effects will be big as soon as the, the, that new legislation hits the books. Well, listen, we have enjoyed delivering another podcast today. If you want to get in touch with us, let us give you the phone number. The phone number here at our office is 858-771-9500. 858-771-9500. And we'd love to get your call. If you want to send an email, want to give your email, Kyle? Yours is shorter. D Myron, D-M-Y-R-O-N at Centura Wealth, C E N. T-U-R-A wealth.com. Give us an email. Give us a call. We'd love to chat. Eric, thanks for hosting us today. Guys, it's my Hope pleasure. Hope you learned something. Yo, absolutely. One of the things Kyle said early on that I've just I heard that pattern throughout the entire thing was you were talking about the professionals and some of them, their job and their purpose is to look backwards. But I know that you and your team are always looking forwards. You're always doing a lot of study, a lot of uh, research, keeping a, abreast of all the tax law possible changes, all the possibilities that are out there, and then having those deep conversations with your clients. So I appreciate what you do. I appreciate the fact that you are, are hosting this podcast and bringing this information to a broader audience. And I do hope that people reach out and, and talk to you about their specific situation because every family is unique, right? Every business is unique and they need that time with you. So guys, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks, Eric. Yeah, thank you, Eric. Great to be back with you. Absolutely, and welcome home, Derek. And again, thank you for being here today. And of course, our last thank you always goes to you, the listening audience. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to the Live Life Liberated podcast with the team from Centura Wealth Advisory. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe now button below. This way, when they come out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. This makes it much easier to share these podcasts with your friends and family. Again, thanks so much for listening today. For everyone at Centura Wealth Advisory, this is Eric Johnson reminding you to live your best day every day, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Live Life Liberated podcast. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Centura Wealth Advisory. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning. 
Centura Wealth Advisory. Centura is an SEC registered investment advisor with its principal place of business in San Diego, California. Centura and its representatives are in compliance with the current registration and notice filing requirements imposed on SEC registered investment advisors, in which Centura maintains clients. Centura may only transact business in those states in which it is notice filed or qualifies for an exemption or exclusion from notice filing requirements. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. Tax relief varies based on client circumstances and all clients do not achieve the same results.